السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم there was recently a study done in the States which showed that in 2019, one of the most frequently used names for newborn baby boys was Muhammad. Now, this has been something normal in the Muslim world and globally that the word Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the name Muhammad being a very common name. But this was one of the first times in American history where the name Muhammad was one of the most frequently used names for baby boys. I've come here all the way from Dallas, Dallas, Texas, to the great city of London, mashallah, where it's so sunny, <laughs> man, and so warm. I've come here to share with you this morning what I believe to be the cause and the secret behind the Prophet ﷺ's ability to leave such a profound impact and influence not only on the people around him, but here 1400 years later, people who are still yet to be born that are going to be affected by the teachings of this beloved man, Muhammad ﷺ. My question to you brothers and sisters this morning is what is the thing, what is the quality what was it that allowed the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to leave such a profound impact on society? How is it that till today, people are following his ways, emulating his ways, and naming their sons after him till today? How did this one man change and impact so many lives? I think you'll find, as I have discovered, that the answer to this question lies in the verse that I recited to you at the beginning of my talk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains some of the qualities of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he describes him as, لَقَدَ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Listen closely. Indeed, there has come to you a prophet, a messenger, Min anfusikum, from your own selves. What does this mean? This means that the man that came to the Arabs of that time, he was one of them. He grew up with them. He spoke their language. He laughed at their jokes. He cried at their pains. He was one of them. They knew who he was, and he knew who they were on an intimate level. But look at the next quality, and this, brothers and sisters, is what I would like our Muslim brothers and sisters to focus on. 2020 is a year where we need 2020 understanding of our deen. And we need to truly understand, brothers and sisters, how it is that we're going to be the people that leave impact on other people's hearts and lives, similar to the way our beloved left an impact on the lives and hearts of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدَ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Now listen closely. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ Very difficult upon him. Deeply pained is he by the hardship that you go through. What does that communicate to me? What does that communicate to you, brothers and sisters? It's that the Prophet Wasallam had a willingness to feel the pain of others. He had a willingness to feel your pain. If you were hurting, he didn't walk past you on the street as if you didn't exist. No, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had a quality. And this quality was that he was ready at any moment, at the drop of a dime, to emotionally invest in you. This is the key. The ability, and not only ability, 
Because many of us have the ability to emotionally invest in people, but we don't have the willingness to emotionally invest in people. When we study the Prophet Sallallahu what we find, the way he was able to change so many people, the way he was able to connect to so many people and make everyone feel so loved by him, is that he was willing to invest emotionally in anyone that he interacted with, brothers and sisters. Any person, fadlan, I mean any animal. There's a story in the book of Abu Dawood, which is a collection of hadith book, one of the siha sitta. Um, there's a story, it's, it's a profound story. The story tells us that the Prophet wasallam one day, he was walking through Medina. He was walking through Medina and he had a group of companions with him. And as he was walking through Medina, there was a camel that was being used to irrigate the lands. It was a work camel, so the owner was using it to water the fields and so on and so forth. And as the Prophet ﷺ walked past this camel, this camel let out this loud crying sound. This loud crying sound, which is, it's a, it's a weird sound that a camel makes when it's crying and it's yelling at the same time. It's a very abrasive sound. And when the Prophet ﷺ heard this sound, he immediately rushed over to this camel. And when he got close to the camel, pay a close attention, pay close attention to your beloved and the emotional investment to even animals. The Prophet ﷺ, he leaned in and he put his hand on the camel and as if he was listening to the camel, then he backed up after, for, after a few minutes. He said, where is the owner of this camel? A man quickly came. Labbaik ya Rasulullah, I'm here. I'm the owner of the camel. How can I help you? What do you want from me? The Prophet ﷺ, he looked at him, he said, sell me this camel. Now, I don't know about you, but if the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ asked you to buy your car, what would your response be? Take it. Take it. I was at one conference, brother was like, yeah, market price, market price. No profit, ya Rasulullah. No profit, no profit. It's market price. I won't tell you what country he was from. You might be able to guess, though. The prophet, he said, it's yours, ya Rasulullah, take it. But then he stopped and he said, but it's the only one I have, though. Meaning, uh, I don't really want to sell this camel, Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet ﷺ, he looked at him and he said, In a bait. Okay, if you don't want to sell the camel, and I want you to listen closely to the words that he said next. He said, He said, I want you to fear Allah regarding these animals that can't speak to you. I want you to fear Allah regarding these animals that can't speak to you. Brothers and sisters, there are people around us that go through emotional turmoil and trauma and they can't tell you how they feel. They can't express the trauma they've been through. They can't tell you how bad their day has been. But the Prophet Sallallahu has placed the burden on your shoulders that you must be people that can listen to hearts. You must be people that can the way people read between lines, you can read between the silence. You can hear what hearts are truly trying to communicate. This was the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What am I saying? The Prophet Sallallahu then backed up. He said, Ittaqillah, fear Allah regarding these animals that cannot speak. This animal has complained to me. This animal has complained to me that you work it too hard and you feed it too little. You know, I have a question. When I read this hadith, there was something that really, really troubled me in this hadith. The, the question I had is, how come this camel never called out to anyone else? Why did this camel not call out to anyone else? You know why, brothers and sisters? It's because when you become a person who emotionally invests in other people, the hearts that are in pain will sense that there's a heart that can listen to my pain. When you become a person who opens their heart to listen to other people's pain, to absorb that, that pain and trauma, 
then people will open up to you because they can sense a heart that feels. So our responsibility is to study the life of the Rasul, understand that his influence was based on understanding. Please take notes on this, or you could buy the book later on. His influence was based on his understanding of people. This is emotional intelligence. You can't influence someone you don't know. You can't influence someone you don't understand. You can't change someone you don't understand. And everything I'm speaking about today, of course it fits in the life of the da'i, the one calling to the way of Allah. But what I'm talking about today is about you and your family, you and your neighbor, you and your boss, you and anyone that you interact with. It is emotional investment that you must build in your heart if you want to live a life like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So influence is based on understanding. You can't influence and cause change unless you understand the one you're with. And understanding, brothers and sisters, is predicated on your ability to listen. Your ability to listen well. Now the thing about listening is many people think listening is a passive act, a, a passive thing that we do, a passive action. No, listening is an active skill that you must learn how to do. You must learn how to be a good listener because when you become a good listener, brothers and sisters, then you will hear deafening sounds in the silence of people that you interact with. You walk in the house and you see your spouse and you say, honey, how are you doing? How's your day? And they go, yeah, I'm all right. Now, I don't know how to speak in, you know, your tongue. You know, we speak a different type of English. So I'm using my phrases here. If I walked in the house and I said, how you doing, honey? How's everything? And she said, yeah, I'm good. Then her statement of, yeah, I'm good, with the inflection and the tone told me, I got some work to do. Maybe I didn't take out the garbage this morning or something. I don't know what it is, but that tone and that silence and the body language all communi communicated to me that there's a lot I heard in that silence, brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ was a man who listened to people. He listened to people because he could not understand them without listening and he could not influence them without understanding them. I'll give you another example of the benefit of listening to people. The Prophet ﷺ, one day he's walking through the streets of Mecca. He's walking through the streets of Mecca and as he's walking through the streets of Mecca, he comes past a man who's known as Rukana. Rukana is what you would consider, you know, a black belt in jiu-jitsu at the time. He was a master wrestler. Everyone in Arabia Peninsula knew that this man was the best of wrestlers. Now I ask you, how do you connect with this man? How do you influence this man? How do you get to the heart of this man? Do you talk about theology on a deep level? Do you talk about the ills of society? Do you talk about complex theological ideologies? No, you don't. How do you talk to this man? Well, you talk to him the way Muhammad talked to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rukana, because Rukana was trying to go the other way. He saw Muhammad coming. He's like, I don't want to talk with this guy. So he started to go the other way. He said, hey, hey Rukana, come back. Let's chat for a bit. You know who I am? Yeah, yeah, I know who you are, of course. You're causing all the trouble in the town here. He says, what do you want to talk about? He said, I don't want to talk. I want to wrestle you. Whoa, hold on. Now you're talking my language. You want to you, you wanna wrestle me? He said, of course, yeah, I want to wrestle you on the condition that if I beat you, you become Muslim. Now, to me and you, the premises don't add up to the conclusion. To me and you, these Ira brothers, you know, they're mad at, you know, analytic and logical and stuff, mashallah. So, so to, to us, the... The premises don't add up. What do you mean? A body slam equals submission to Islam? But for Rukana, who speaks the language, that's his language. He goes, yeah, okay, let's go. 
So Rukana goes on his side. The Prophet Sallallahu goes on his side. You can imagine the people of, uh, of Mecca surrounding around. Here it goes. It's going down. Let's go. Everybody's hyped up to see this go down. Muhammad versus Rukana. Like the Khabib fight. Come on. Come on. Don't front. So here they are surrounded around. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone says, let's go. It starts. And before you know it, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam picks up Rukana. He slams him down. For you know what, the Prophet is looking over Rukana. What's up? <laughs> Rukana says, beginners, look, I slipped. There's no way. Let's go again. They stand back up. Go again before you know it. Rukana's down. The Prophet is looking at him. Third time, if this time you beat me, I say, La ilaha illallah. Him and Rukana go again. This time he goes down. This time he gets up and he says, I swear, you have to be a prophet of God. Now, to me and you, it doesn't add up. Slams don't equal a religious proof because that's not your heart's language. That's not what your language speaks and your job as a good Muslim, as a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is to learn to speak the languages of the people that you want to be with. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, y'all all know this story. She says one day there was a group that was playing a sport in the masjid, and I wanted to see it more than anything. So the Prophet Sallallahu he stood in the doorway and he held his arm up and there was a cloth that was draping so that no one could see me while I was watching. And she says that I was looking over his shoulder or his arm and I was watching and watching and watching and watching. And she says, I was tired of watching, but I wanted to know something about my husband. She said, I wanted to know how much he loved me, how long he'll stand there. And the Prophet Sallallahu he listens to hearts. He listens to hearts. And he stands there, and he stands there, and he stands there, and he says, are you done yet? She goes, no. So he stands there, and he stands there, and he stands there because he speaks the languages of hearts, and he wants her heart to know that not only am I listening, but I understand you, and I'm here with you. That is how you become someone who influences the next person. That is how you become someone who imitates the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ways. So we said influence is based on understanding. Understanding is based on your ability to listen deeply. But I ask you all a question. What does it take to listen closely? What does it take to be a good listener? It's a quality that is very difficult in our day and age. Presence and mindfulness. Presence in the moment. Being present with the people you share space and time with. How many times I get complaints. I'm speaking to my husband, but he's not present. You know what I'm talking about. My, my wife does this trick. You know, she'll be talking and then she'll go, what did I just say? And I got good so I can get the last three words. I got the last three words down. So I'll say the last three words. She's not like, no, no, go back a little bit. And I'll be like, I'm sorry. she would be like, but you wrote the book. And then I say, but I'm still studying the book. Yo. My point, brothers and sisters, is that presence in the moment. Presence is becoming difficult because we like to multitask. We, when we're at work, we think of home. When we're at, at home, we think of work. When we're with our children, we think of our wife. When we're with our wife, we think of our children. Wherever we're at, our mind is not there. I'm going to ask you a question. How can you listen to someone deeply if you're not present with them? How can you hear what their heart is saying if you're not truly present in the moment? You can't. The only way that you can truly listen to people, which means the only way you can truly understand people, that means the only way you can truly 
influence people is to be present with them. You know what's so beautiful about Islam? Five times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches you a quick workshop in presence. Five times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you're going to need a skill in life to benefit your sons, your daughters, your wife, your husband, your co-workers. There's a skill you're going to need, and that skill is called presence and mindfulness for your mind to be present in the moment. And I'm going to five times a day train you in that skill because that's how important that skill is. So Allah says five times a day, you say Allahu Akbar and you become present in the moment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, even then we're not present. So in the prayer, not present. Out the prayer, not present. Here's my question to you. If every moment of your life you live, you're there in one place, but your mind is somewhere, have you ever truly lived a moment? You know, I always crack the joke like, you know, some of us have the, I'm just going to pick on the moms real quick. We have the mother that's always rushing somewhere. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like when we go home, we're rushing out the house. When we rush out the house, then we get to the store, we're rushing. Then we're rushing everywhere. There's nowhere we're supposed to be because we're always rushing somewhere. You know what I'm talking about. The point, brothers and sisters, is that you are where you're supposed to be right now. And the way the prophet interacted with people is he knew that that moment was priceless. Let me give an example. Tomorrow, do you have tomorrow right now? Who here knows for sure they will walk out of here 10 minutes from now? They'll have life. Who knows for sure they'll have life tomorrow? None of us. No one raised their hand. Who know, Who has yesterday here? Who has yesterday? Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not pr promise. All you have is this moment right now. Do you know the best gift you can give to someone you love is the only thing you truly have, and that's right now. The I'm going to say that again. The best gift you can give someone you love, the best gift you can give someone is the only thing you truly have, and that's this present moment that I'm hadir, I'm present with you, I'm here with you. Undivided attention. This is how you listen to people. This is how you understand people. This is how you influence people. But guess what? There's something you have to have before you can even dream of presence. You have to value people. You have to value them. When you value people, you'll be present with them. That presence will allow you to listen, and that listening will give you understanding, and that understanding will give you the ability to change them. There's a hadith that is perhaps one of my favorite hadith, where the Prophet وسلم, in Shema'il al-Tirmidhi is explained and described as, if you sat with him in a gathering, you felt that you were the most special person to him. There are some of us in this room that have two or three other people in our house, but those three people, none of them feel that they're the most special to us. But your Prophet Muhammad Wasallam could make the entire room feel that they were the most special person. The point of my talk, and I'm going to conclude, is that we need to learn the sacred art, the prophetic art of emotional investment in people. We need to understand that if we truly want to fulfill the rights of our loved ones, if we truly want to fulfill the rights of our neighbors, that we have to connect to them emotionally. And the only way we can do that is to value them, which will lead to being present with them, which will lead to our ability to listen to them, which will lead to our understanding of them. And when you've done all of those things, brothers and sisters, you will have gained the ability to influence people the way your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu influenced people. I make a prayer and supplication that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us with this lost art of being present with people. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless us with this lost ability to truly listen to people. The Qadi who recited today, he described Allah explaining 
the state of disbelievers in the hereafter. Fi adhanihim waqar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that one of the reasons why they disbelieved was in their ears there was something blocking them from listening. In Surah Mulk, something we read every night, Allah tells us that the disbelievers will say, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلْ Only if we could learn how to listen. It may sound simple, brothers and sisters, but it's not. It takes practice. It takes practice to listen. You know why? Many of us, while we're listening, we're actually talking in our head what I'm going to say next. You're not listening. You're having a conversation waiting for your turn to talk. Listening is a sacred art. Listening is something that Adi bin Hatim saw from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's my time? I, I, I need two minutes, yo. All right, cool. I came all the way from Dallas, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm going to share this one last example of the power of listening. Adi bin Hatim was the son of Hatim al-Ta'i. Hatim al-Ta'i was the Bill Gates of his time. He was known for his wealth. And his son was Adi, radiallahu an. When Islam came to the village of Adi, he fled. He fled to Syria. And his sister was captured, and she saw the beauty of Islam, and then she became a Muslim, and she left, and she called her brother. She said, hey, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu talking about you. He, he thinks well of you, this and that. You should go meet him. Long story short, Adi bin Hatim, he comes to Medina. When he comes to Medina, now you have to understand who he is. This is a man of prestige. This is a man of influence. This is a man that if he accepts Islam, his whole tribe accepts Islam. This is a man that he's looked up to in society. So when he walks into Medina, everyone's like, like oh, Adi's here. And Immediately, he's escorted to the Prophet ﷺ. Now, I want you to watch this encounter. The Prophet ﷺ, he sees him. They bring him to, the Prophet stands up, he goes and he greets him, and he places his two hands around the hand of Adi, and he said, Ya, oh Adi, I asked Allah to place your hand between my hands. I was waiting for this moment. And he shook his hand. Then he said, come with me. And he didn't let go of his hand. He didn't let go of his hand. He held his hand. And he walked with him. And as they walked, they were walking, 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 headed back to the house of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As they were walking, an elderly woman from amongst the Muslims, she saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walking. She don't know who Adi is. She could care less about Adi, radiallahu anh. She has a hajjah. She has something she needs to talk to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about. So she walks up to him and she stops him. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to talk to one of the most influential men in Arabia. He's going to give him, him dawah. And on his way, this elderly woman stops him. She stops him and she starts talking to him. And you need to imagine, I mean, you know, she's giving it to him a bit. She's older than him. So she's saying, oh, Muhammad, this is going wrong, and the shoes aren't on the rack in the masjid, and you know, all that stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Whatever, khair. So she's talking to the Prophet ﷺ about whatever issues she has. And Adi bin Hatim is watching him. And listen to the words. I'm going to end with this. Adi bin Hatim, he says, as I watched this man listen so closely and so long to this woman, I understood that this man could not be a king. The way he listened to her told me he can only be a prophet of God. By the way he listened to people, he knew that this man was a prophet of God. May Allah bless all of you with the ability to listen. May Allah bless all of us with the ability to emotionally invest in the people that we love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us hearts that listen and hearts that feel the pain of others. Jazakumullahu khair. Assalamu alaikum.